Hey everyone, welcome back to Lowdown, your source for music, art, and entertainment in the Akron area and beyond. On this episode, we've got a lot featured for everyone to check out and see, so I hope you're all looking forward to it. Up first, we've got the art exhibit Synapse 15 here at the University of Akron this past summer. The art exhibit was founded 15 years ago by a professor here, and it brought together both the arts and science department for a whole lot of creativity. Let's check it out. Synapse is a means of forming new ways for student learning, particularly by engaging real life challenges and subject matter. It is a collaborative of many disciplines across the university with a focus on exploring intersections of art and science. The idea is to create and reach new audiences for both the arts and the sciences. In keeping with the spirit of connections that Synapse fosters, the works on display are loosely organized around themes such as time, data, material, and environment. I think it's easy to say that Judy Pfaff is an alchemist. This means that she takes everyday materials, domestic objects, and DIY sensibilities and transforms them into cosmologies and environments that immerse us. The work in the exhibition features forms that appear like they come from some kind of subterranean ocean, at first appearing like otherworldly creatures. Closer inspection shows them to be made of industrial materials of our modern and pop culture lives. My work has been fundamentally about ecology in an expanded frame. My understanding of land, sea, and atmosphere engages interrelated cycles of natural and man-made materials and processes. This worldview was developed through the practice of ceramics, installations, and conceptual proposals that evolve concepts of site, alchemical, material, historical transformations as a symbiotic merging of physical matter and living systems across geologic time. Mark Dion's work is often characterized as a contemporary curiosity cabinet. Dion functions as an explorer, a collector, and sometimes an actor, taking on the character of a scientist or a naturalist. He invites the audience to be an active participant in that narrative and to find connections from the elementary school lesson and consumer culture to the professional researcher. I have my own personal desire to learn more about the world. And I pretty much assume that a lot of people would like to know more about what's underfoot and why is it raining mostly on the weekends. So I try and have projects that are both collaborating with the natural processes that are on the site, but also showing the humans that are looking at it what's going on and how they're part of those natural processes. Wonkit Yi searches for facts that appear to be fictions and fictions that are part true. In the installation, Chinese mystical prayers are placed to give voice to those that are unheard and silenced. Part sci-fi, part documentary, part karaoke machine, the work challenges us to consider how we are part of the myths that we consume and active partners in the knowledge we pursue. So every piece begins with data that I collect about a certain event, such as a hurricane, a flood, or fire. So I begin with numbers. That's always the first step. So as I'm collecting numbers and reading up on how communities are responding to the disaster, I'm also quietly looking for some sort of story I want to talk about related to the event. Once I start building, the sculpture or the score become part of the con conversation because they may suggest to me some additional data that I might want to include for structural reasons, for conceptual reasons, and that invariably changes the initial idea of the story that I had. Terry Winters is in pursuit of visualizing the world around us that is real but invisible through a mixture of invention, testing, and play. The pollen prints suggest the temporary qualities of dust and atoms, while the atmospheres present a taxonomy of different layers intertwined. 
multiple languages and perceptions of information layered on top of one another refuse to harmonize. Winters is revealing the life that happens when things don't match up. So the biotensegrity logics explored in beta and beta S um, are developed from a singular component from a kind of larger, more complex initial idea about a deployable farming strategy. However, through the process of kind of working through these two projects, um, we've become kind of increasingly interested in exploring the ideas of dynamic motion that both of those pavilions and installations provide um, and see that um, as an opportunity opportunity to develop an integrated farming wall in kind of new ways. The work in this exhibit takes a modern approach by looking at functionality within the natural world from the micro to the macro as a means of thinking, visualizing, and making. One of the Sabin Lab projects, Polybrick, is an exploration of how biological patterns of growth and function distilled into mathematical algorithms can be combined with modern 3D printing techniques in ceramics and other materials. Nervous System is a collaborative design studio that champions the design of forms based on how living systems function. Their products, including jewelry, dresses, and architectural elements, take their forms from running their 3D printers on programs based on biological principles and patterns. They develop a set of mechanisms that allow them to control, manipulate, and sculpt the growing process. These act as a set of material and environmental conditions that they can vary through space and time to produce finely differentiated structures. It's always great to see what art and science can provide when combined together. Don't go anywhere. Lowdown will be right back after this. Hey everyone, welcome back. For our next segment, we're changing it up a little bit. We've been going through our archive here at ZTV and have found a lot of the old programs that haven't been seen since they've been broadcast. So without further delay, we'd like to showcase the fruits of our labor and show a few of the lowdown packages that we've recovered. And without further delay, let's roll the tapes. This is Lightning Loves the Kite, and it's about a lightning bolt that falls in love with a kite. It's my second solo album. I'm really excited about it. It's like a conceptual album with a bunch of poetry in it, and in the middle of it there are six songs that are, it's like a movement of music, and it has narration, so a story that goes into a song, and it goes into another story, and into another song. Rachel's Secret Stash, we're a band of friends. We're like this group of people that ended up together in this wonderful place called Akron, Ohio. The Brown Bag is a new record that we're going to drop um, in the fall, and I'm looking forward to it, fall 09. And we just, you know, tucked ourselves into this little farm town in the middle of uh, Illinois, and uh, we came out the other end of it with a fantastic record that really sounds pretty awesome. With Rachel, it's, um, dance, rock, as much funk as she'll let us play. The brown bag. There's a secret stash in the brown bag. But in a brown bag, you can find many different things in a brown bag, and that's what the album is like. The brown bag is, uh, it's, it's a secret. <laughs> it is the secret. Possibly, um, in the brown bag, we will have brown stuff. What could possibly be in this brown bag? No, we are good you. I feel our music is becoming more widespread because, I mean, at our school now, most people know what we're, like, who we are, and then it's just, like, spreading throughout. Some of my influences have been uh, bands, like Blind K and, like, alternative rock bands. I just... Look up to them, how they made it. 
as these dark and rainy clouds fall overhead. The band, we became involved in music with Evan and Dylan had played together as friends for a while, and then they found me at school and asked if I wanted to come jam with them. Since we were all like serious about it, we kind of decided to take it to the next level. We have a demo out, it's four songs, it's called the Black and White EP. My mom's helped me advance my music over the years, since so she's a professional piano player. I actually started writing stuff that happened in my life, just stuff that struck me emotionally, I guess. To be successful, I think it takes a lot of dedication. You have to be really good at music, obviously, but one of the main things that most bands lack is any form of connections within the industry because there's a lot of good bands out there that no one's ever heard of. Nothing's really gonna just come to you and land in your lap. You gotta kind of go for it. Some of our obstacles as a band have been like coming in second place in contests and stuff. So that just pushes us to write better songs and get better performing them so we can come in first next time. We want people to be touched and like when they listen to our music and like if they're having a bad day, just make them happy when they listen to us. And we also want people to be able to relate because a lot of our songs about situations. When we played at Battle of the Bands in front of a sold out crowd, before we went on, we were all really nervous and felt a lot of pressure that we had to perform like really great and not mess up at all. And then once we got out there, they started chanting our name and cheering and I would like us to be remembered as just a bunch of good guys trying to have a good time. It's great to see how this program and others at ZTV have evolved over the years. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everyone. For our last segment today on Lowdown, we're going to be featuring one of our own team members. Her name is Maddie McSweeney. Maddie is a double major here at the University of Akron in both the Myers School of Art and the School of Communications. Let's see what she's been creating for her time here at the university. My name is Maddie McSweeney and I'm a fourth year at the Myers School of Art at the University of Akron. Um, I'm studying studio art and media studies along with minors in painting and printmaking. So this semester I'm enrolled in Advanced Painting, Sculpture 2, and Intro to Ceramics. Um, my main areas of interest are uh, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. So I am developing my work in painting and sculpture and kind of taking ceramics as a filler class, but I'm really enjoying the work that I'm making in there as well, and it kind of relates to the other work that I'm making. So I've been making art most of my life. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I actually said that I wanted to be an artist when I grew up, so that's kind of funny that I'm now here. Um, it took me a while to fully decide and commit to coming to art school, but I'm really glad that I did and I really think that it's um, my true calling, as cliche as that sounds. In my painting class, I just started wrapping up on my first painting. Um, it's not quite done yet, but um, in this body of work, I'm kind of exploring uncomfortable and playful narratives. Um, I'm really intrigued by beauty and grotesqueness and uh, focusing on really vivid and vibrant colors. And um, I really like just creating a very visceral, uncomfortable experience for the viewer. In my first painting, I'm portraying um, this pubescent boy 
who has a uh, crush on this pretty girl that he sees on a school bus. And I'm kind of depicting that in a very exaggerated and almost kind of gross way. Um, yeah, in this piece, I am just really looking at a lot of vivid colors, um, how space kind of pushes back or is pulled forward and creating that tension between different layers. Um, I'm also looking a lot at um, simplifying spaces and pushing myself to break shapes down more and thinking about um, abstracting forms rather than rendering them completely. I feel like providing, almost providing less information is more descriptive to the viewer. Ultimately, I'm just trying to have a lot of fun in painting. Um, I feel like as an art student, I have a very complicated relationship to painting and also just art in general. One of my favorite things in painting is um, color as well as mark making. I think there's so many different marks that you can get in painting that um, I don't know, kind of allude to or portray different things. Like in my current painting, I have a lot of different languages going on of um, kind of like lights and airy or super rushed and almost like scribble or kind of like a child did it or something very like intentional and crisp. Um, I think it's really interesting when all these things kind of combine and you can spot different things all across the painting. Um, and I like doing that with color as well. Um, I really like really lush, bright colors and kind of being able to like pinpoint that across the painting. So for my first project uh, with sculpture, we are learning how to make molds, which is a really fun process of taking a found object and um, building up a layer of clay around it, putting layers of silicone on it, and then making kind of an outer stabilizing uh, plaster mold. And by doing this, you can ultimately um, pour whatever medium you want, plaster, wax, cement, into this mold and get an exact or close to exact replica of the item that you found. Yeah, I'm really continuously interested in these very uh, evocative feelings, these very instinctual reactions that you get as a viewer, kind of being like, what the hell is this? Why is this a thing? Why would anybody ever make this? This is so weird. Um, uh, conceptually, that's really interesting to me, um, along with all, all of the other technical and formal issues um, that I address in my work. For anybody who's thinking about going to art school, I say just do it. I think there, to now today, there are so many different options and avenues and opportunities. Um, whether you want to be a full-time artist and just live off of your artwork or do other things like gallery work, museum work, there's so many different options. And um, art school is very difficult. It is hard. It's hard to get a degree in creativity. It's kind of a weird concept, um, but as long as you believe in yourself and you believe in your community, I think that, you know, you can really have an amazing experience. And that'll do it for us today on Lowdown. If you want to see more of us, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or subscribe to our YouTube channel at ZTV Lowdown. I'm Tanner Martin. Good night, and that's The Lowdown.
This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV, make media, make a difference.